Hey, I hope everyone's having a good day so far. You got through lesson one, safe and sound, so let's look at 8.2, which is where we're going to focus specifically on translations. So if you think about 8.2, it's you're going to be able to create translations and answer problems involving translations. So step one, though, well, what is a translation? Right. To get the specific definition of a translation, it's a something that moves an object from one spot to another, which you learned in lesson one, which is the slide which is why I brought back the hearts, just so you remember how much I love you. So, and if you remember the vocabulary, there were five vocabulary terms that are going to keep popping up in every lesson, and we're going to apply those ideas to these. So let's look at some important facts about translations. The first important fact is that it, they are an isometry. All right, now what's that mean? That means they preserve distance. All right, so remember that. The second important fact is that they preserve orientation. Now remember orientation is keeping the points in the same order. So normally the points are labeled. So if I go ABC going from left to right, it stays ABC going from left to right. The third important thing is that they are they have congruence. Image and pre-image. Alright. So these are important words too. Pre-image is the first one. So if we look over here, the pre-image is your original. Alright. The image is what you get after the transformation. So in this case, this is the heart. This is our pre-image. After we translate it, this is the image. And they're congruent, right? We said because congruence is they keep the same size and shape. So they say the same size and they say the same shape. And then finally, number four is there are no invariant points. Now what does that mean? That means every point moves. Remember what invariant means? It's that the point isn't affected or it doesn't change based on the transformation. Well, in translations, every point's going to move, so there are no invariant points for a translation. All right, there's all the fancy stuff. Let's actually get to the math, right? So let's look at these two examples. Are the following transformations translations? So all we're looking for is to keep these, right? We want to look that it, per that it preserves orientation specifically, that things stay congruent. All right, so let's see what happens. This first one. It looks like these points are sliding. They stay in the same order when we go from left to right. That's a perfect example of a translation. All right, so this one is a yes. All right, let's look at the second one. Now, right away, you should see a red flag because, well, orientation looks like it's staying the same. And it definitely has moved, but it looks like the image has turned. And when you think a turn, you don't think of a translation you think of a rotation, right? So this is a no. So you will have questions where they'll ask you, like, is this a translation? Or what transformation is this? And just knowing these ideas as well as what it's supposed to look like, that'll take you a long way. So those are like the, is this is looking at the picture problems. Let's look at some of the math problems. So we're going to go through a few, and then you'll be on your own. Now when you see this right here, this is your clue that you are doing a translation. It's the big T, and there'll be some sort of number down here, some sort of number down here. Now the first number goes with the X. So what you see happening will be only to the X. And here, what you see happening will only happen to the Y. What am I talking about? Let's look at this first example. It says, what is the image of the point 4, 3 under this translation? So using these numbers, we're going to change these numbers. So let's start with this one, right? So we have our x coordinate, which is 4. So this is the x value, right? And our y coordinate, which is 3. Now we come back over here. We're going to add 3 because it's a positive 3. So we're going to just do 4 plus 3. And our new point, our new x coordinate is 7, right? And then here, since it's a negative 3, we're going to subtract 3. So 3 minus 3 is 0. So our answer, the image, 
is 7 comma 0. So all you're going to do is add or subtract the x here and then the y here based on what you see. Pretty simple, right? Well, you know math. They can make it a little harder, but not too much. So let's flip ahead. This is your next page. It says complete the transformation. This example says a translation moves point n, 8 comma negative 5, to n uh, to the first, or n prime, which is 5 comma negative 2. Now, what are the coordinates of the image of 5 comma 5 under the same translation? So whatever happened here, we want to do to this point. So we just have to figure out what the translation was. So here, the coordinates of n, we know were 8 and negative 5, all right? And we wanted to do something, so that way we got a 5 and a negative 2, all right? So this is what it started as, 8. And we want to get it to 5. Well, how did we do that? Well, we subtracted 3, right? When we were at negative 5, how did we get to negative 2? Well, we added 3. So these right here, this section right here, that's the actual translation. So if we wanted to write it, we'd write big T, and we'd write negative 3, comma 3, right? Because I subtracted 3 from the x, and I added 3 to the y's. So guess what? You just did the hard part. The easy part now is just to apply this translation to our point. So if our point that they want us to change, I'll do it down here in blue. How about that? The point they want us to change is 5, comma 5. All right? And we want to do a translation of negative 3, comma 3. And sometimes you'll see it written like this with the arrow. So over here, we want to just subtract 3 from the x's. So what's 5 minus 3? Well, that's 2. And what is 5 plus 3? Well, that's 8. So our final answer is 2 comma 8. So the trick here was just to figure out what the translation was. Let's look at number 2. It says the image of line segment RE under a translation is R to the first, E to the first. Under this translation, R, so our first R, maps or slides or moves to R to the first, which is 10 comma negative 1. Using this translation, find the coordinates of E prime if E is negative 4 comma 0. So it's the same thing. We have to figure out what translation gets us from here to there. All right, so once again, we just do the same thing. We start with a 6 and we do something to it to give us a 10. And then we start with a 2 and we do something to it to give us a negative 1. Well, to get to 10, here, I'll write it in a different color so we can see. We obviously added 4, right? 6 plus 4 is 10. And then how do we get from 2 to negative 1? Well, we subtract 3. So this right here is our translation. So when we come over here, we're going to write it as t, 4, comma, negative 3. Now they want us to find the coordinates of a new e if our original e is negative 4, comma, 0. So we've got negative 4, comma, 0, and this is e. And we're going to translate it by 4, comma, negative 3 to give us e prime, right? Or e to the first. And so here, negative 4 plus 4, because that's with the x's, that's just going to be a 0. 0 minus 3, give us negative 3. And we're done. That's it. Translations are pretty simple. This one, though, could be a little tricky. I'm pretty sure you could do it on your own, but... I'll help you out a little bit. It says a translation moves triangle ABC to A to the first, B to the first, C to the first, right? Under this translation, B, 9 comma 2, maps onto B prime, 5 comma 5, so it moves. Using this translation, the coordinates of the image are 3, negative 6. Determine and state the coordinates of point C. So here they gave us the end, and they want us to find the first point. But we start off exactly the same. So we have this B, and we have our image, the B. So let's see how we did it. So we started with 9. We did something to it to give us 5. And then up here, you remember our 2 right there. We had a 2, 
We did something to it to get us to 5. Well, how do we get from 9 to 5? We subtract 4. How do we get from 2 to 5? We add 3. So this is our translation. Negative 4, comma 3. All right. Now, this time, we have some, we have C, which we don't know the coordinates for. And we have to do this translation of negative 4, comma 3. And it's supposed to give us 3, comma, negative 6. We have to work backwards, right? Because this is the ending. That C with a little mark up there, that means it's the image. They want us to find the original. Well, how would I work backwards? Now, if I knew this, I would subtract 4 to get 3. Well, we should have to do the opposite. So instead of subtracting 4, we're going to add 4. So 3 plus 4 will give us 7, right? And then negative 6 minus 3 will give us negative 9. Now, if you want to check your answer, see if the translation makes sense. I have to do 7 minus 4 gives us 3. Awesome. Negative 9 plus 3 gives us negative 6. Also awesome. So if you get one of these where you have to go in the opposite direction, check it. Check it at the end. It's an easy check. Just do the translation. Make sure it makes sense, and you're good to go. That's it. Translations are super simple for you. Um, the next two pages are for you to complete on your own. Best of luck, and we'll be seeing you soon.